This is the doom, the doom. Are you the mom that it was at that one point, maybe about a couple years ago, when uh, Jerry, 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 Terry, the trying to burn the con guy? Was that you? That's me. Can you can you take it from there? Tell us a little bit about this uh, this, this situation that, that was happening at that time. They had you on the TV, on the CNN, all over. Can you tell us a little about this and yourself? Uh, uh, as we have seen over the years, many times, some hate groups try to uh, provoke Muslims by insulting the Prophet or Islam or the Quran. So we have in our back of uh, Central Florida in Gainesville, about two hours from here, a so-called pastor, and I say so-called because I don't believe he really lives up to his Christian values. Uh, he created a way around the idea of judging the Quran and wanted to burn the Quran. So he had, on the ninth anniversary of September 11, uh, a trial set up to try the Quran as guilty for causing wars and misery in the world and try to tie the Quran and Muslims to uh, be responsible for what happened on 9-11. And he garnered a lot of attention from the media because the media loves controversy. And uh, I felt as the leader in Central Florida that I had to step in and talk to this person if he was you know, uh, unaware of what Islam is, I'll talk to him and teach him. But if he was really a troublemaker, I have to stop him from insulting uh, Islam and 1.6 billion Muslims. And to stop him from burning our scripture. So, uh, on the invitation of the mayor of Gainesville, and after an event in Gainesville there with the mayor, and, uh, spiritual leaders, uh, I talked to the mayor and he uh, really recommended that I go and meet Terry Jones. That's his name, not Eddie. <laughs> so I, I went and uh, tried to speak to him one-on-one -on -one and found him to be, you know, full of hate, ignorant person. Uh, but nevertheless, I was determined to stop him from burning the Quran because it was happening right at the end of Ramadan, the month of the Qur'an, and right, you know, at, on the second day of Eid. So I said, what an insult to all of us, worldwide. Alhamdulillah, after two days of efforts and negotiations, I was able to convince him to, uh, to cancel it, and to cancel all the spectacle, and he was exposed to the whole world for being a hateful person, being a crazy person, and uh, everywhere I went, non-Muslims have, you know, distanced themselves from him and said he does not represent them. And this time, I think we won. Showed that Muslims are not the crazy ones who are committing something, but this is uh, a hateful person who is trying to provoke Muslims to do something. So. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, used me in that opportunity to, to stop this man from his uh, evil effort. We, we take strong offense, isn't it, that if someone even insult Jesus, peace be upon him. Yes. Isn't that right? Who, Definitely. Who was one of the mightiest messengers that God Almighty sent with the same message. That Moses came with Abraham, they all came with the same message. Worship the Creator, not his creation. And he's mentioned how many times in the Quran, Jesus, his blessed mother, right? So he, he'd be, I mean, Jesus would stand for this I too. Told him, I told him, we love and respect Jesus. I told him, you know, the, the method I followed with him was quoting to him from the Bible. Mm -hmm. He said, we believe in the gospel. Mm -hmm. We believe in the Torah. And that's why I'm talking to you as a, a religious man to a religious man. You know, follow your own book. I said, would Jesus do what you're doing? That's not loving your neighbor. Exactly. That's the very verse I said, you know, Jesus said, love your neighbor. And I'm your neighbor. You know, I'm not talking to you about the people overseas, but I'm right here. Did any Muslim in Central Florida hurt you, 
or come by your church and did anything wrong? I said, no. As a matter of fact, he said, you're the first Muslim I meet. I said, so? I said, if you can point out a Muslim who has insulted you or hurt you in any way, I'll take care of them. Mm -hmm. But the fact is there's over 50,000 Muslims in Central Florida and nobody did anything to you. So, you know, you have to love your neighbors. And that's what Jesus told you. So he, that was one of the many steps I took to try to reduce his hate. May the credit has earned a lot of rewards. If uh, you can take it from here, tell us a little about yourself. You see, I mentioned the book. Oh, yes. Really caught my attention. Uh -huh. and, and this is the vernacular language, mm -hmm. the youth they can connect with. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little about yourself and, and what motivated you to write this book. Yes. Uh, I myself uh, was born in Chicago, went to the Chicago public school systems from kindergarten all the way to high school. Uh, Hamra sports was something that I've started at a young age. Uh, and with, with sports, there's benefits, you know, at the same time, uh, there's always sometimes uh, social uh, concerns that you could go through. Uh, so one of the things that uh, I realized growing, growing up, uh, being someone involved in the community, uh, and opportunity where basketball became something where I went like on the state level, kind of national level of playing and traveling, so what, what's happened is uh, I had many questions. Why can't we do this? Uh, and you know, especially your first year, you know, first generation coming here asking the shuyuk, why is this haram? Why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? And sometimes uh, father or, or individuals kind of say, well, it's haram just because it's haram. Because uh, uh, others are told it's haram. So as I grew up going through the M M uh, MSA days and realizing these concerns and social issues where a lot of the kids, especially in high school, are really getting challenged, not about praying, it's why they're not praying. Or, they're having these issues with the uh, opposite gender. So as I grew um, older, I thought to myself, one of the things is to write about these challenges. Because I know a lot of kids are going through it. I was, as I was traveling to speak to many youth, I realized you can't get to every individual. But through a book, they could always read about that topic they have an issue with. So that's where I, we did this little survey with kids you know, throughout the United States to say, what are the top 10 uh, areas uh, through MENA, Muslim youth in North America. And then from there, we kind of wrote down and said, let's write about these. So, me and my, uh, my cousin Saad decided to write this book, and, and, and Hamla it's, uh, it's slowly kind of picked up and taken off here and, and overseas. Let's talk about this theme now, right? What came to my mind is the rise of us. I thought about it. I, I thought about it a lot, yeah. right? right? And the, one of the things that came to my mind was the great messengers that the Creator sent again, uh, with the same message that Muhammad came with, and Jesus and all of them. He was calling his people, look, get, get on the ship, get with us. Like what we're trying to do today. So talk to us. What okay, came what to your mind when, when this this wonderful thing that ride with us? What comes? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? We're going to take you over I'm going to let him because he's going to oh, be yeah. out of there. <laughs> um, you, you know, with ride with us, which is very important. You know, you know, yesterday there was a topic called you know rocking the boat. You know, so when is you're on the boat, but then on, on the rocking the boat, you want to take some of the chances, especially um, sometimes when you're rocking it. And like today's is riding the wave, so you fall and off the boat. So sometimes kids get tempted; they want to take that chance. One of the big things I've realized with kids is it's not going to happen to me, and I call it the Iblis syndrome. And there's some of the arrogance, and that's why the book we wrote was called War Within the Hearts, because we realize it's your heart, something that's always going on, and saying, "Yeah, I, I know, but." I just want to see, just try it, and, but I, I won't go too far. You know, I know my limits. And, and that's where we've seen, like, you know, the challenge of, no, you need to stay into the boat. Don't, you know, even when you're on the boat right now, that's, you know, the, the captain tells you, don't put your hand outside the boat. Even if you think, like, oh, I have a life jacket, or don't I have some friends around me, if I fall, then I'll swim back. You don't know how big those waves are. And that's one of the big uh, concerns. So, so, you know, I, I really kind of like that theme of making sure you're secure in the boat, not outside the boat, not kind of on the corner of the boat, not saying, well, I'll just keep, just in case I have a life jacket, if I fall off, I know I could get back. But just staying firm because Allah knows what's best. And if it's Allah's boat through the prophets, that's the boat you want to go on to. Any other boat, it might look good through uh, Iblis's deception, but it's just going to take you to a, a state of drowning. Shay, what about yourself commenting on this? Too? You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you guys want to just feel the audience, clearly stated that Yadullah ma'al jama'ah, that Allah's hand is with the jama'ah, the group. So, woman says that, says that, and the person who goes by himself will go into the hellfire. 
What will protect us as communities, as youth, is sticking together like a pack. You know, and, and he said in another example that the wolf will take from the sheep the one that's straying by itself. So every time a youth person, as Brother Habib said, think that they can handle it on their own and they leave the community, they leave the masjid life, they leave the youth group and say, I'm going to strike out on my own, they are putting themselves at great risk. They need to really stick with the Jannah, stick with the youth, because they will constantly remind them of what's right. They will be honest with them, critiquing them, and helping them see the things they don't see. Today, many youth, you know, they love to hear praise from friends or peers who are not interested in their well-being. However, they don't want to listen to their own brothers or sisters who may tell them what's wrong with them. You know, so they run away from that. We need to be honest with ourselves. And it's simple to understand. I wouldn't know what the sky looked like, what the trees looked like. I would have never seen the faces of my beautiful children if I didn't have the ability to see. How blessed we are by Allah. And obedience is born out of gratitude. So thank Him, call upon Him, establish a relationship with Him, forget about the past. Take it out of being a ritual and make it a spiritual experience. Islam is not something dubious, unclear, hazy. It's really straightforward. He said it changed his life. He said he saw every single episode that you had ever recorded. At one point in their life, you can bring up a child and teach them the rituals, but at one point, connect them with the Creator, but at one point, don't they have to make a conscious decision that this is indeed from the Creator and consciously submit themselves? Isn't that right? Yes, indeed. Islam is not about following blindly even the right Islam. You have to choose for yourself. Okay? Islam is by choice, not by inheritance. So we have a lot of Muslims today, 1.6 billion Muslims, who say we're Muslims, but they don't act like Muslims. The vast majority are not acting or thinking like Muslims because they inherited traditions and practices from their parents and grandparents without thinking about them. Islam is by choice, and Allah will hold you responsible for that choice, for that niyyah that you have. And going back to the point that Brother Habib was saying, you know, uh, Nuh's son, this whole, the whole verses in Surah Hud is about Nuh's son. How Nuh built the boat, and he is a great prophet who for 950 years was preaching his people. So imagine how long he has been talking to his own son. Yet, there was no guarantee. His son was with the disbelievers. And at the last minute where he could have saved his own life, he chose to stay with the wrong group. And that's what happens every day on the streets. You know, children of Muslims, they choose to part with their own parents and their own community and say, no, I want to stay with my friends. Don't know that that is the end of their, you know, I have buried people who did that. And they could have been alive and Muslim, but they chose bad friendship and got killed in a drug deal. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah. Tell us, let's take it to the parents now, right? So, and what comes to my mind, look, Islam is beautiful. It's this way of life from the Creator. You know, there are certain things set. The pure mind of You can't go and worship Muhammad one day, Jesus the other, and, you know, mix it with all these uh, things that aren't sanctioned from the Creator. It's clear. It's the six articles of faith, belief in God, belief in the angels, the books that reveal, you mentioned, the gospel in its original that was given to Jesus, the Torah that was given to Moses in its original. And, and, and the Day of Judgment, and then the Five Pillars, praying. You can't pray when you want to pray, you know what I mean? I'll pray, you know, once a month, right? Five times a day, minimum. And the fasting, etc. right? These are set. But now, there's flexibility in some things. Tell us the part where Ali ibn Talib, where he said, commenting, giving this great advice that to the parents about raising their children, not how you were raised, but do you know this, this statement? But they were raised, at, you were raised at a different time, and they're raised at a different time. So how can we get with the times without compromising 
right? Because sometimes we bring some of this back home culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're just going through the, the, the rituals, mm -hmm. but your heart's not connected to Allah. Mm -hmm. The woman doesn't know really why she's mm -hmm. wearing hijab. Mm -hmm. She don't know the, maybe the wisdoms behind it, that it makes sense. So how could we get the parents on the same page as the children without compromising? So maybe they can change up the techniques a little bit, right? Instead of making it seem like it's just a bunch of rituals, right? You're praying, and you've been praying maybe 15 years, you don't even know what, you don't even know what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. And they threaten them. Islam is being used as, uh, you know, a lynch to bring them back in order. And that's wrong. Islam is beautiful. And we see that parents also push culture on their children. And they dress it as Islam. Mm -hmm. That if you don't eat biryani, you're committing a sin. If you're not... Well, I mean, if, if the kid wants to eat a burger or a hot dog, that's fine. You know, it's halal, halal. But no, we insist on cultural things and we give in on real Islam. So the children grow up in this environment, they feel there is some sort of hypocrisy there. And we need to emphasize the deen itself, not try to import, you know, cultural practices that our kids born here, grew up here, don't, can't practice them in an American culture. Yeah, and there's nothing backwards about Islam. That culture, you know, that you're trying to implement, that might be backwards, but Islam's not backwards. Yeah, and that culture might be fine and dandy back in their parents' original country, but it's, it doesn't work. You can't dress like that here. You can't, you know, necessarily practice that every day here. Mm -hmm. So maybe on Eid, on, a, on International Day, but not every day. So we, uh, especially as the parents, we have to take it easy on our children if they want to express their American culture in an, in an Islamic context. That's not, there's nothing wrong, that's the culture. That's what I'm talking about, there's flexibility, right? There's flexibility. So we're not compromising here where, again, there's that thing, you don't drink, you don't date, you don't work with your girl, you do it the holistic and the wholesome, you get married, right? And you have a family, you have children, and you have a bond with them, and you do it the right way because everything I call it, Islam is the best self defense. I teach self defense. Mm -hmm. So when I look at Islam, you just have to watch some of the news. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a recently, you just, you just every day you turn on the news and you see some tragic event happening where let's say a girl, it was recent, she went to a party, right? Mm -hmm. And she ended up getting intoxicated and then the boys assaulted her and then they took her picture and they put it up on Facebook all over. Did you know all the story? Mm -hmm. Girl? And then she committed suicide. It's done her life was she thought was over. Mm -hmm. And you look and you see the teachings that the Creator sent down. It's because he loves you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's because he loves you. It's a protection for you mm -hmm. from having something bad like this happen. Isn't it right? Yes, and I think this is where sometimes we have to use what data is to, you know, a lot of times in, in, in the books, what we're trying to tell the kids is that, look, Allah SWT knows us. Like, you know, just, you know, I use examples like, you know, Mercedes Benz, when they, you know, a car, a really nice car, the person who makes it has a manual, tells exactly what you need to do, 10,000 miles, change the tires, 15,000, do this, don't put this uh, 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 gas in there. Same way Allah has given us the Quran and He has given us the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to tell us exactly how to do it. And sometimes kids need to get reality checks. When you know, when I talk about saying, you know, gender relations, like, man, man, it looks so good. Why can't we just kind of holler at the young lady just to talk? I won't do anything. But just the same way, 1.8 million girls under the age of 16 last year had kids. You think 1.8 million under the age of 16. Every, one out of every four kids in high school have an STD. People think that, you know, it's not going to happen. 68% of 11-year-old kids have seen an adult website. Because, oh, no, it's not going to happen to me. And one of the big realities is that we got to realize, uh, when, I, when we talk to parents, is that everyone thinks they have the mashallah child. Like, it can't happen to me. You know, this is something we were talking about yesterday. So it's very important to understand that kids need to say, when Allah has these rules, there's a reason why. And here, it's only manifesting now in society and saying, look, see what it exactly does. Alcohol, you know, Allah says, there's goods and there's bads, but the bads outweigh the goods. And you can see many of... When alcohol, when people are drinking, it plays a big part. And, uh, and you start seeing that more and more. So, you know, when you're not, you know, we'll tell about clubs and say, why do you think they have ladies for free? Could you think guys will come if it was just uh, a club for without? There's a reason, right? Why is it, think about that, they'll say, you know, 
it, even it's, it's it, at least it's so deception. Now he makes it look good. He doesn't gonna say, oh, smoking. Even for smoking, you don't have it. Someone's like, this is so good. <laughs> you know, you got the person. <laughs> looks good, man. I wish I could smoke. It just looks good. But that's the deception. And even to a point, we've got so deceptive. Like, you know, I was in, uh, I was in San Francisco, and I was waiting for my sh Chicago, and Virgin Airlines, it says, uh, 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 boarding to Sin City. I'm like, I, I just looked at that and said, subhanAllah. I'm just like, man, Sin there. City. Like, man, what a roll up in it. You know, it's I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Sin City, because whatever happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. Yeah. You don't think Allah knows? But it's almost so much that they use it as their punchline. Like, don't worry. No one has to know. We'll keep it on the down low, right? And that's exactly what Iblis wants. It's like, but that's the thing of keeping Allah's word until look, you do this, it will come out. It will manifest. And it will, if it doesn't happen now, it might happen a few years from now. If not, it will happen in the hereafter. And that's what we're trying to get kids to understand. Is there any correlation you guys should say with the Big Apple? Is that also, you know, Big Apple, New York? Yeah, New York. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's back up. All you can. <laughs> all you can. And and and, and it's, it's, yeah, you know, I never thought about that. Oh, that's good. That's a good title right there, <laughs> you know, with Adam and the fruit, huh? <laughs> Just take a bite out of Christ. But Islam is doing the opposite, isn't it? It's calling us to stay away from things that are destructive to human being. There's nothing good in, in, in drugs and alcoholism. And look, you mentioned all the STDs and, mm. and, and women with, with uh, having children, uh, illegitimate children, you don't have to be caught for lineage. So there's so many. So much good that comes down with this, but we, how do we get deceived? I mean, how, how do you think it out? Because people will, will fight tooth and nail to go to that club, that party, and it's just like blind, just, just want to jump in. It's like you're running towards, you're running towards the hellfire, right? How, how do you stop it? Well, I mean, casinos, clubs, um, Cigarette companies, they spend millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars on marketing campaigns to kids. You know, in many cities, the, the billboards are right outside the school. So, and like he said, you know, Joe Camo looks good with that cigarette. Yeah. They know exactly, the shaitan knows exactly how to, you know, market to the youth. And we do a poor job. As an imam, we do a poor job in marketing for Islam to attract people to say, come to the masjid where you're going to have real peace and real happiness. The masjids are not welcoming, you know. And I have walked into masjids where some of the parents, they shout on the kids and say, you know, stop talking, you know, this is a the masjid. They make the masjid unwelcoming. And, you know, the women especially say, oh, women can't go to the masjid. Who said that? You know, if the Prophet ﷺ had the women in the masjid without the separation between women and men, okay, and right there they were praying, and women actually spoke directly to the Prophet and directly to, to Umar, you know, challenged him in, in Jum'ah Khutbah. So today we bring some cultural practices that make the masjids, you know, unwelcoming to our children, to our youth, to our women, and we end up with just all folks praying in the masjid by themselves who are waiting to go to their grave. So we have to do a better job in countering the marketing campaigns that are targeting our youth by making our communities and our masjids welcoming for the youth, for the women, for programs that enrich their lives and give them an alternative. I mean, people don't want to live a boring life, you know. The clubs are promising them things that are exciting. And they go to the masjid and they see nothing but boring stuff. Sit here, don't talk, you know, open your book and they say, you know, people love life and they want to go out. So we have as leaders, as principals, to make our schools, our masjids, really the hub for life, for activity, for happiness. What do you think about this? Uh, we know that, um Islam promotes the highest level of being, I mean, the first verses that were revealed, the other clubs, you know, that we love to, to recite, proclaim, read, and then you're Lord. I mean, it's incumbent on every one who has submitted to the will of God to see, say the promise, right? To, 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 to
comment on this, or can you start to neglect this knowledge? And the other knowledge is great, it's good right. too. But then you have what's called, what I call the uh, doctor engineer syndrome. Right? Right. You, know, you, you just have to get this degree, and, you, and the woman, she's in college, and you know, she's almost like uh, 30 or 40, and you know, the young boy also can't get married because he gets his degree, and you see, you know, mm -hmm. the promise of some people, the promise said, well, you know, there's going to be a great, you know, uh, um, calamity now if these youth aren't married. Yeah, I, I think it, it's, 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 you know, this idea of one of the reasons I think, you know, even the book is a lot of times when we're young, everything that we have to have our kids to start reading, when ignorance, and you just kind of say, well, I think this is what I heard. And then it's very important because if kids understand that, hey, Allah has answers for everything, everything. all you have to do is just read and take some time. And that's what's the beauty about our deen. Our deen is not about you just ask one Shaykh, you make forgiveness for me, I'm, I'm clear. And you start seeing these, it manifests now all over. Even in Muslim countries where there are many people who don't read. They're just relying on whatever the sh that sheikh says in that mosque. And sometimes in those, like when I'm in India. And in some places in India, if there's a person who maybe just memorized Quran. Doesn't mean he's a sheikh. He just memorized Quran and so, said, well, he becomes imam. Then they think everything, you can ask him any question. That doesn't mean he might know the exact answer. And that's why you start seeing some stuff that in some of the third world countries, you're like, man, this is kind of borderline <laughs> questionable. And then you have individuals, you know, Hamla had the opportunity to go to Kenya, and, and, and they had this one, you know, area, uh, and, 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 and talking to the youth, and you have one sheikh, you know, they speak Swahili, or English, so you have a sheikh speaking in Arabic to them, you know, just translating a book, 65 kids, all listening. But the problem is, if you're not relating to some of the issues, I'm saying, you're talking about Akhila, where half of the people on, the 40% of the population is on AIDS. You have, they have this little stick uh, uh, drug that they use, and they're selling. And you had, like, I was in Mombasa, and what was happening, the Shabab were coming in and, and, and um, recruiting. And where were they going? The cafes. Because kids are, you know, playing, I can show you a real one, I give you money for it too. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, we have to start making these kids understand that this, this is not the easy way out. This is not the way the dean teaches you, just to do something like this and, you know, you got your, your one-way ticket to Jannah. That's not the dean. And until we start having them read and understand. And that comes back to our parents also, the value of, of religious ed education. When we have someone that says, you know what, I'll, I'll move to the nice community district, uh, neighborhood for ac academics. I'll go to Kumon and pay $100, $200 extra, or a tutor. But when someone has to say, well, a sheikh wants to charge $10 an hour, stuff for a lot, this is the dean. You're asking for money? What have we done? You know, at the, and, and, at the, you know the, the, the beauty of our dean was at the, at the prime, the scholars were paid well. The, 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 the judge were paid well. Why? Because you don't want them to be. You know, there's hikmah. Why does the God person who paid the, the guy with the collector was paid well? See, there, there's no temptation to just, you know, let's, let's, let's make this happen on this side. There's hikmah in everything that our, our dean does. And I think it's very important for us to start realizing, hey, parents, you need to, if you want in people of, 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 of high caliber to go into the dean, they should do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also, at the same time, you need young youth directors and say, you know what, I could work into this thing and have that and have an opportunity to work at an institution where I could still support my family. Just reasonable. We, everyone who works in the dean is supposed to be like, well, you're supposed to live like the, 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 the humble of the humble life. The, who wants to strive to be like you? Yeah. Yes, we have stories that, you know, to be humble, but that comes in within. Sometimes the reality is that kid doesn't like, well, yeah, that's fine. I'll just do that. With, I'll get religious when I get old. When I get close to Allah, I'll go to Hajj, clean slate after that. And I'll marry a righteous woman because she'll make me religious. Why does she marry you? You know, I want to marry you. <laughs> so you see this mindset of, of guys, you know, when we grow up and how, how, how people are talking. Mm -hmm. So lack of knowledge, it needs to uh, really, very important, understanding the deen. Not just reading the Quran, we need to do that, but understanding the Quran also, and our, and our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm -hmm. Best father 
and to try to, is it worth it at the expense of a degree? We get a degree, but at the expense of a degree, because we get a lot of people send us uh, emails at the main show, and we see a lot of people falling into fornication, into sin out, because their parents are keeping them away from fulfilling something that's natural in the right way. Have you seen this also? Definitely. The, the trend in the Muslim community is to wait and to finish that you know, medical degree or engineering or law degree, and then you can get married and then you know, start your life. But that's not the Islamic approach. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya man zawaj. All young people, whoever has the ability to get married, should get married. Mm -hmm. So this is a direct command from the Prophet who is inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what benefits us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, if he wants us to marry at 30 or 40, he will have delayed that. But uh, in a recent you know, study they have seen, and this was from a Princeton uh, graduate, she herself went through the experience that she wanted to have a child, but it was too late for her. She was in her 40s after she finished and she got the job. And now she got married, but then it was too risky for her to get pregnant. And she wrote a book about this phenomenon that the Ivy School graduates, most of them, most of the women especially, they end up not having children because it's too late. They're competing. And her best advice, this is not from the Prophet or a Muslim, this is from a person from her own experience. She said, everyone, every woman going to an Ivy League school should get married before she starts. <laughs> and she said, your peers are around you, get married, because it's better to start your life with your partner knowing where you're going. So Muslims are advised by the Prophet to select their spouse based on their akhlaq and their deen early on, not based on Oh, he or she has that medical degree or law degree, or they have a big bank account. If you choose the person based on their deed, based on their akhlaq, you will never go wrong, and you will go together. And I personally went through this experience myself. I got married, my wife was still graduating, and then I had to support her to go to medical school. And alhamdulillah, she finished, she's practicing physician, and I myself, you know, we grew together. We have, alhamdulillah, several children. We raised them. And now I'm encouraging my 17-year-old. I want you to get married as soon as you have a chance. Because he is in college. He has finished two years early and he, you know, went uh, to college. He's second year in college. So I know what temptation is out there around him. I don't want him to say, well, my parents are against that idea. I said, no, I want you to find a person who is Muslim, who is good, in their deen and akhlaq, and that's my criteria. Not necessarily the degree, or how much money they come with. We, as parents, have to take that, you know, away from the children where they feel my parents will stand against it, because they will not let me choose the person I love, because they're not from my, you know, town, or my city, or my family, we have many cultural restrictions that are preventing young people from getting married. And I've seen many 30, 40 year old Muslims today, professionals, who are still waiting. And I said, what are you waiting for? You know, the train has passed you by. Who's going to go and marry, you know, 30, 40 year old woman or man when they can find someone who is 20? And that is your fault. You waited and waited, thinking that if I get this degree, I'll be more marketable. No, you won't. It's better to start early. So I encourage it, and speaking to the youth here, heed the advice of the Prophet ﷺ, get married early so that you are not tempted by the Shaitan to commit the wrong things. Give the parents and the youth some final advice for the leaders and go back to the Shaitan. No, inshallah. Um, you know, one is, I think, for, for, for our young, is, is to make that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it takes time, and that means through. Salah, I think, is one of the biggest keys. And then you can try to make that establishment in, in the masjid. I know a lot of times now everyone learns online. And I think I, I worry about that sometimes because the, 
the, the, the, the masjid has, there's, 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 there's a reason why the Prophet Sallallahu everywhere he went made them, built the mosque. And I think it's very important to come there and there's going to be always some form of politics and stuff, but don't use that as an excuse because that's what the Iblis is putting in everyone's head. I don't want to deal with the politics. But we realize throughout history, the way of Allah Sunnah is that everyone he loved, he made it not easy. When the prophets had to work hard, they had to go through back and forth, pushing, you know, going through tough times, even with their own people. So one is to not give up and then making that establishment. Learning the deen, understanding the deen, and making good friends. You got to know, you know your heart, check your heart, you know when you're doing something wrong. And my big thing right now is the internet, internet, internet. For the young ones, you got to watch that. Because this is where I've seen more kids are at a young age becoming more mature, not really in the sense of intellectually, but what they're seeing. And I think they're trying to raise up and they're trying to do some things that they shouldn't be doing. So I think, you know, if, if quickly, I mean, those are our things. So one is on the, on the thing of a vice, what I would say is really the internet and cable and really parents. And where the parents need to do is really put some, some kind of control. Like I have my own, I always tell people I, don't, I have no shame. Even on my own laptop, I have a thing called Cyber Patrol Cyber sister, uh, Sitter. My wife put the password on it. I said, don't tell me the password. And she has it. So anywhere, you know, just because you never know what email comes to you, what email could go out. So it's very important. So I think that, that one aspect of it. And parent uh, is, and then for the young, is not always give your kid hope. Always give hope. Do not ever despair because that's, Iblisa was the one who despaired. Adam alayhi salam, why it was different? Because he made a mistake. Rabbana zalam man fusana and so on. He made his dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, so that's one thing I want kids to realize that when you make a mistake, work hard. Allah always gives you another chance. It's almost like a video game, right? But, just, but after a while, the game might be over. Same thing with parents. Even I know sometimes take away your pride and know that this child is going to be your investment for the hereafter. And that way you always will keep on working on him. And I realize if the shepherd's good to the sheep, even if the sheep gets lost, he'll find his way back home. So inshallah, I make dua that Allah Salih helps all of us, and even us all adults, because all of us are still got challenges. Yeah. It doesn't stop. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone.